Hello, good morning. So today I thought of making a special video about um, appointment of judges. So this topic, I uh, just got an inspiration from one of the articles which I was reading yesterday in newspaper and I thought I need to make a video about it. This is uh, re related to our constitution and our entire framework, how it works and how really the judges are appointed. And um, uh, this is very essential for uh, all of us to know because a constitution is the mother of all laws. Okay, so the, all the other laws which was formed eventually were formed from the constitution as the base. So this is a supreme law. Okay, so even the Supreme Court, if you think about it, the, he, the Supreme Court is the primary defender of our constitution and of our fundamental rights. Um, and knowing about the appointment of the judges will help us to understand more about how our judicial system works and how our law will work and how everything is settled. So I hope I am going to be as simple and as uh, clear in this uh, topic especially uh, this is very murky topic many people don't understand very clearly what exactly is going on and how exactly they are appointed. So all those questions will be resolved in this video and I want you to make sure that you have enough time to sit through this video and try to grasp it because this knowledge once you have grasped it stays with you forever. Okay, so please take a deep breath, inhale and exhale and focus with me for 10 minutes to understand how the judicial system works and how the judges are appointed. Okay, let's get started. So uh, you all know the courts, hierarchy of the courts, right? So I'll not go in detail about hierarchy of the courts. That will be another video. But you know that basically that there are district courts where district judges are appointed. And then we have um, high courts where high court judges are appointed. Then we have the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is the right now currently we have only one Supreme Court and it is on the top. Okay, it's in Delhi and whatever the Supreme Court um, judgments are taken that's abiding to all of the lower courts, all of the high courts of all which is there across the states and um, across the territory and also it is abiding on the various uh, civil metropolitan and uh, district courts also. Okay, so Supreme Court laws are the primary uh, source. Um, uh, well, not primary source, they are actually secondary source, but the primary, uh, uh, so if there is something which where there is no specifically explicit law pertaining to that subject, then if there is a judgment of Supreme Court which is there uh, relating to that, then that is held at a, at, at a high importance. Okay. So there has been recently an uproar about the appointment of the judges. One of the reasons why we have to understand is that the judges are appointed by something called as collegium system. Okay, when even when I heard that word collegium, I was like, okay, what is college? Is it like they have to go to some college or something? So I was not really clear. But as and when I understood this topic more, I understood what the collegium system means and how it is beneficial for us as a country. Okay, so collegium system really means that uh, the like for example if i'll let's take supreme court okay if a judge in the supreme court has to be appointed then usually what happens is for the chief justice of india even though the president of india formally appoints the chief justice of india and other supreme court judges the outgoing uh, chief justice of india recommends his successor his or her successor okay so uh, so in practice if you really think about it it's really um, more of a seniority based on the seniority and super succession the supreme court judges are appointed but whereas for example if we say uh, okay how is this system even reliable so it's really more like if i am leaving i am going to appoint my successor and go um, is that something which is uh, which is a very good system for us as as India. So what we have to understand here this is the crux of the entire judicial system to be independent. Okay, So as you know that legislature and executive and judiciary there are three wings. Executive actually has to follow more of the they have to follow both uh, legislative and judicial action, actions but judiciary is independent. They are not no MLA or MP can control these Supreme Court judges or their judgments. So now if you think about it, if really if we allow that uh, that all the you know MPs can elect Supreme Court judges, how will it be? 
they will only appoint those judges whom they think they are going to favor in their uh, in their for their uh, party right because what even cases are filed against these mps also mps and mlas and different party workers they are, the cases are filed against them also so if we don't have independent judiciary then what will happen indirectly the mlas are controlling the judiciary also because if the uh, the appointment also falls under them then then there is no independence of judiciary right theoretically think about this if i am an mla or mp and i am going to appoint a judge then uh, i i am going to favor uh, those persons again this is going to be arbitrary right i'm going to favor those persons whom i think will uh, tomorrow maybe like he's you know a friend of mine he, whatever case my, in anything case which comes against me he will rule in my favor that's what i'm going to think and that's how i'm going to extend the appointment for these people to curb that we have something called as um, collegium system okay where collegium system what happens is the the entire judiciary they appoint within themselves so now when you think about it now right now the uproar is that that if you are doing like it's like nobody can get in that system and you are doing you are controlling everything by yourself and uh, this is not something which is acceptable you have to have uh, you know uh, uh, legislation has to has a say in the appointment of the judges and the supreme court is not agreeing to it because the crux of the entire independence of the judiciary is lost if we let the legislature or any other uh, party dictate and now if you think about it this one okay uh, how about let's have a vote okay and just like how we have elections let's have elections for supreme court judges also if you think about it can supreme court see many times what happens politicians will not doesn't have to stick to their whatever uh, words they say sometimes it's a common this thing right even in parliament whatever is said in parliament you cannot hold them in the court of law because many times what happens that in the uh, discussion in the flow or in the whenever like they are doing a propaganda they'll say hundred of things they don't have to stick to it but judiciary is not like that judiciary is more of a straight line and they don't they have to hold the they have to uphold the law they cannot really be people pleasing so if we do elections for supreme court judges then they will have to be people pleasing otherwise they cannot win the next term so you see my point so they cannot be fair they cannot be um, people will not like them for for the decisions they take many times for example if uh, like even though you may say that um, the judges have to be fair when they are doing something even uh, many times we have seen media trials right so there will be a case and media will be running through running through and already people will form an opinion about a person that uh, that whether the person is guilty or not guilty but that doesn't happen with uh, supreme court judges right they can they can, they have to go through evidences they have to go through law and they have to make a decision on that even though they feel that that person might have done it and there is a strong reason that person might have done it just based on the doubt they cannot make a ruling they have to go by evidence they have to go by we have they, they should be 100% uh, clarity that that person has committed the crime only then they can award a judgment on that but many times what happens that media trial when that happens they form an opinion about the entire judicial system and uh, and maybe about the judge also sometimes the judge might have even though even even though there has been a lot of uh, you know um, circumstances which are pointing towards that particular person to be a convict still they may ha they may have to take uh, you know they may not they may not fulfill that conviction to that person mainly because there is a loss of evidence or the only sub only the like, hypothetical evidence is po pointing towards them but that cannot really prove whether the person has really committed the crime or not in that case they may have they may have to not they ca they cannot take the decision that's how the law works but if we have to be a people pleasing person then they have to get aligned towards the media trial because if they have to because if really if their term or if uh, their uh, election is based on uh, based on uh, you know if, uh, like based on people if people have to vote for supreme court judges then the supreme court judges have to be instead of doing their job they have to do other things also propaganda and uh, they have to do uh, all kind of politics and to avoid all those things that's the reason the collegium system is there 
right now the the collagen system is not something which is looked upon like they are saying that they are just doing within their cells and uh, they are there is no they hardly any per person has any say regarding the appointment of the judges and uh, all those things yes um, that side will be there but if we have to really weigh pros versus cons here what is the pro of collagen system and what is the cons of collagen system right now if you think about it to maintain the independence of the judiciary collagen system is essential other, uh, otherwise there is no other option as i told you already if you are letting any legislative uh, to appoint the uh, judges then again we are compromising the judiciary here and uh, then whatever judgments he take will be regarded as biased okay because that the person had appointed him and there won't be any fairness even if even if the judge rules out um, you know against uh, i mean rules out for that particular mp or uh, any um, you know legislative uh, individual then even then the people would think that oh it's because he appointed him that's the reason why you know it's like they are fair they you know they are like ruling it on their side he's like a puppet on that's what the opinion will be and if we are really going to go for voting just like how we do how we elect our um, mlas and mps we start electing our judges then the judges have to do a lot more things than what we are really expected them to do and they we can't expect them to be fair they will also be like become like a politician you know uh, politicizing and uh, like you know doing things uh, just to benefit a cause and the so third thing is the fixed tenure will not be there then in that case there won't be any decisiveness also many times that is that is another issue what's happening right now in executive actually you see ias officers and ips officers they keep transfer they keep getting transferred so much that after one one point they will they just don't want to work because they are like okay i'm going to work on something and then in middle of that some mla or some mp doesn't like that and then they will get me transferred because that's right now that's what is happening because these um, legislative people have that power of transfer of judges and appointment of uh, and selecting these uh, key ias officers and ips officers in particular schemes or committees what they have they are using that for their advantage and corruption is building mainly because of that reason actually sometimes it's it sometimes honest uh, ias officer ips officers are, are have their hands tied down and they are transferred and they uh, without their their will you know and if they just go little bit against any person then uh, you know they they're sure that they have to get like transferred and sometimes they'll have to think about the bigger picture okay if i really mess with this guy he's going to get me transferred but i have another project which is very essential crucial which i need to do so let me just favor for in, in you know in this aspect and at least focus on the other uh, upliftment activity they might think that way also so this is one of the prime reasons why there is right now the judiciary at least is uh, independent and we have that authenticity with the judges and everything because it's independent of all this ties from mlas but there has been recently that that's the article which i read about where they are having a lot of uproar about the transfer of the judges and they they want to control that and they want to control the appointment of the judges so if that goes through then there won't be any independence of the judiciary it will be exactly like how it is happening right now with our ias officers and ips officers because then the legislative team will become all powerful and they'll start controlling the uh, the judicial actions even now we, as as i speak there are many writ petitions which are filed even against mlas mps and even against uh, any political parties or any person who is engaged in um, in a you know uh, no, uh, no unfair uh, like for example if there's a writ petition you have everybody has that right to use the use those uh, writ jurisdiction and uh, with the high courts and supreme courts and they have that right and that right will be curbed if legislative gets the power of appointing the judges so right now the system is collegium system where collegium system is um uh like as i said the chief justice of india will be uh, appointed uh, by on the recommendation of the, of the outgoing chief justice of india and collegium system for uh, supreme court will be the 
uh, chief justice of india and other four senior most uh, supreme court judges they will form a collegium and they will recommend and they will appoint um, the um, the judges for supreme courts and same goes with the high courts and uh, same goes with the other lower courts also and they the legislative right now has no say on the appointment of the judges it's independent so it's done it's they are trying to keep the sanctity of judiciary within themselves and that is the one of the um, uh, one of the key role what we play as lawyers is to make sure that we give good fight for any cause and since we also understand how this legal framework and laws work and that ultimately the law is supreme here nobody nobody is supreme this is a clarity which all of us who works in the legal framework has that law is supreme nobody else nobody is and there are appeals for example if there is if there is any suit which is which goes um, against the law then there is a lot of legal um, options which we can take against the uh, the decision which has been taken in appeals okay so many people don't know that but as common man i understand the the situation what you might be feeling that oh okay it's uh, it's like in a you know, lot of um, you know legal fees are incurred and uh, is that even cause which sometimes the it's also very slow uh, the judicial system is quite slow right now mainly because that's another thing which was talked in this article which i mentioned that there are a lot of cases pending cases which are there Mm, and uh, getting the time court's time is very valuable and uh, getting the time to and within that short time getting getting the apt um, judgment or justice for that cause is a very difficult i'm not saying impossible but very difficult and very uh, long process long due yes and um, one of the reasons might be it's because of the various laws which we have which are intertwined and interlinked and uh, so many um, amendments and so many uh, you know timeline timeline of the case also needs to be studied since there are a lot of aspects which are there that's the reason why the judicial process has become delayed but it has nothing to do with the capacity of the judges because the judges are very competent to take any kind of de uh, no decisions in that but it's just the just the intensity of the laws what we have and just sheer uh, the population what we have is also one of the reasons why uh, there has been a delay in most of the judgments but uh, com but as you said see um, how the independence of judiciary is ascertained by the collegium system of appointment and this is the reason why i told you like please bear with me for a few minutes and so that now you are clear that how really college and system works and what is the crux the entire like the like the entire soul the soul of the college and system what it is is to maintain independent judiciary so i hope uh, the concept is clear for you i did tell 10 minutes but then i took 20 minutes of your time i really apologize but i had a lot of things to say that's the reason why and if you do like my videos uh, please share and subscribe and uh, put your feedback in the comment box and i'll be i love reading that thank you and uh, one more thing uh, please don't put your personal case details in the comment box uh, i saw few of them were putting that um, please just don't do that because still it's a personal thing and whatever conversation you have with your uh, lawyer will be a private conversation and it's confidential so make sure that don't use comment box to actually use your um, to put your details in that so that may go against you also so that's the reason why i'm telling don't don't do it uh, so if you do want to reach out to me so you can uh, reach out to me in my email address which have which if you need if you comment and i will give the email address to you but other than that please don't put your case details in the comment box so have a good day and uh, i'll see you again in the next video bye